Hey there, so I just got back from Fred's Records. It's a uh, it's a record and movie shop. They have a lot of older movies. Uh, so I completed a collection. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff there. Some stuff I picked up, some stuff I still wish I picked up, and some really, one really, really rare thing that I'm going to show you guys uh, that I'm very excited about. So uh, let's get to it. Hey there, so today I went to Fred's Records, a uh, great little shop. If you're ever in uh, the St. John's area, definitely got to check it out. They've got a lot of really rare and cool stuff there. There's some things that I didn't pick up uh, that I uh, that I thought I had or that I wait on for later. Uh, I'll go over that before I get into this stuff here. What we call this building the suspense, I guess. Uh, anyway, I got down there and there was a sale on their box sets. Fred's is getting rid of a lot of their box sets. They've got a lot there. They've had them there for a while. Uh, a lot of them are on open stuff. So, we had a bunch of stuff like uh, we had friends there for like four dollars, three fifty, that type of thing, per season. I particularly am, am looking for, and the only reason I probably didn't pick it up today is because I couldn't remember the season. But being a fan like uh, the uh, of the so of soap operas, there's actually an episode of Friends that goes over a two-parter where Joey who's acting as like a, a fictional doctor on like the soap opera Days of Our Lives, has a bunch of the uh, actors from Days at that time on the show. And one of them, I think, is Kevin Spurtis, who stars in uh, Friday the 13th, uh, Part 7. Uh, uh, you know, The New Blood. So I wasn't sure what season that was, and I kind of like the Emily season, so those were the two big ones for me. Uh, so I didn't pick that up. The other one was Dawson's Creek. A lot of the music was changed in the later seasons of Dawson's Creek, which is the one thing that held me off. As far as it comes like the TV shows like that, uh, aside from the character of, of Remington Steele's movie buffness on, uh, on, the, on the series Remington Steele, Dawson's Leary is about as close to uh, Teenage Aaron as you're ever going to see. Uh, except instead of Spielberg, it was like horror. Uh, but uh, that was cool. But I wanted to pick up some stuff that I really needed to get today. I didn't just want to buy to, for buying or buy and being unsure. They didn't have all the Dawson's Creek seasons there, so I didn't want to go and not get them all. Uh, though if I do get it, I might get just the first season because that one doesn't have the music changed. <coughs> now, then maybe I'll go by the set down the road or something. I'm not sure. I do like to have the seasons on their own, though. I did grab the last, I got the last three seasons that I needed for the series Angel. Although the first two seasons of Angel and the fifth season are by far the best seasons in the show, I'm a completely sent on all of them. So I have for three dollars I grabbed Angel season three. Uh, this is the one where she gets sucked into the other dimension and kind of becomes a god, uh, you know, Cordelia. Before uh, Josh Whedon would continue to screw over in the next two seasons of the series. Josh Whedon is often talked about for his strong writing and portrayals of female characters. Uh, on the surface, that works all good and well when you think, well, Buffy's a strong female character and you got Willow and stuff. But if you really look at the way Josh Whedon writes a lot of his characters, I'm going to get some hate for this. I'm sorry, and I'm, a, and I'm a huge fan of a lot of Josh's shows. But here's the thing. He's not good to his, to his characters. He randomly kills them off. He puts them through, I don't know, we're borderline misogynistic trials. Uh, I don't always see them as strong characters. Uh, Cordelia was written extremely badly in the original uh, Buffy series, in my opinion. And uh, it was only this series here where she, they started to write it well. But because Josh Whedon didn't like the actress, that Chris McCartney that plays Cordelia, and that, and th that is all it comes down to, because he didn't like her, he put her character through hell, and anybody that liked her on the show through hell. If Firefly would have kept on going, and I liked Firefly, and I, I was one of those people that was upset when Firefly ended, until I read what Josh Whedon wanted to do with Firefly in the next season. Google it. Uh, you, if, you're, if you've been upset that Firefly went off the air after only one season, you may not be if you Google the reason that Josh Whedon took the shot, that what Josh Whedon's plan for the show was. Let's just say it was going to get... Kind of rapey, and uh, yeah. 
But that being said, I do love Angel. Uh, third season of Angel, that was pretty solid. Uh, fourth season, not. Nah, it's not a solid season. It's crap. Uh, Cordelia mysteriously disappears with no memory. She comes back and, spoiler alert, uh, births the big bad or the big good. You don't really find out. Uh, actors from Firefly just been canceled. Actors from Firefly were being put on to the show. So they have one of the main actresses come on as uh, kind of like a, a oh God, I don't know. What the hell is she called? You have like two episodes. And Jealous. I like Angel. The series Angel. You know what? I don't, I'm, but I'm not going to fool myself. David Boreanaz, not the greatest actor in the world. Uh, really not the greatest actor in the world. Especially when he has to play the character of Angelus. I know he really relishes the role of Angelus because he gets to kind of not be what he was on Buffy. Which was like, you know, Buffy! <clears throat> You know, crying all the time. And, uh... But he... There's like two or three episodes where he's locked in a cage. Doing his Angelus thing. Uh, th that being said, you know... I'll watch a Josh Whedon written Angel show. A bad episode. Any day. Over a lot of shows that are on TV. So, even though I'm ragging on it. I did like the series a lot. Especially the first couple of seasons. And I think it got really good again. When we got to this. The fifth season. Uh... Why? See, this guy here. Uh, here we go. Spike. <clears throat> Who I've been lucky enough to meet a couple times in real life. Uh, really nice. Gave me a hug. Really nice guy. Uh, he rocked it. Uh, what they did with Amy Acker's character in the sixth season, though. Not a fan of that either. <laughs> not gonna lie. I did not like what happened to Fred in season six of, uh, of Angel. The... Spoiler alert. They kill her too. They kill her and her body's a husk and it's taken over by uh, by an entity of some sort, which uh, a demon or something, I don't remember right now. But that being said, all that being said, all that negative stuff being said, there are some great episodes in the fifth season of Angel. I love the way the series ends. You take that, that was on the left, I take that was on the right. Uh, something like that. Uh, I actually kind of look forward to, uh, to having all these the complete. I got the complete Buffy, and now I got the complete Angel. Uh, that's a lot of hate for Whedon when I really actually like him a lot. Uh, yeah, I apologize for that. I actually do really, really like Whedon, and I thought Angel, for me, was a more solid series in many aspects than Buffy was. Uh, the writing seemed to get there faster. But that being said, Buffy had more time to, like, uh, you know, had more, you know, they'd been around the block by the time Angel came around. I picked up one other thing. Six bucks. I'm so stoked that I got this. Uh, yeah. This may mean nothing to anybody else but me, but it means a hell of a lot to me. And uh, I love women in prison films. I think they're a lot of fun. <clears throat> and I grabbed Chain Heat 2. This thing has been really hard to find. Uh, when I checked online, it went for like a hundred bucks. Not that I'll ever get rid of it because I really do love these type of films. So let's just check it out here. Because we, uh, we seal these things. I hate the fact that they put a sticker on the inside. There's a quick way, guys, to find out if you're if something that you got maybe used or resealed. Because if you open it up and stickers on the inside, then you know it has been. <laughs> so, gotta do this. They took what, two security tags on the inside of this thing. Because uh, maybe they knew. There was some other stuff down there. There was like a. Uh, I didn't have much cash in me today. There was an Anchor Bay one, an earlier Anchor Bay, end of the line, I think. With that before you went to Stars Media, that I was going to pick up, and uh, probably well some other time. This has some people don't like this. I do. It has the uh, you know this this is a Canadian release because you look on the inside and you see that you re there's reverse cover with French on there. I actually really dig that. So Chain Heat Two, 
Angel season three, four, and five, which is one of my favorite seasons. The first season with Doyle is my favorite season uh, because that and the Angel was best when it was written by the guy that would go on the right shield. Uh, he did some really great stuff with the cops in it. He did some gritty aspects to the series. Some people didn't like the uh, you know the the police aspect of it. I really did. And I thought they could have went a lot farther with it, and he did want to push it a lot farther than they did. So there we go. I have gotten seasons three, four, and five of Angel, which is my favorite Josh Whedon show. What's your favorite Josh Whedon show? What's your favorite Josh Whedon show? Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? <laughs> That's nobody's favorite Josh Whedon show. Shows its age. Mm. Buffy. I find the best, when I rewatch Buffy, the best episodes of Buffy, she's really going to disagree with this, tend to be the ones that include the character of Faith. She was, she came across really well. And even when I'm watching season, really, I was over to the kids, uh, visiting the kids recently, and uh, they were watching Angel over there. And uh, it was dry. I mean, it was really freaking dry. It was hard to get through the episode. And then Elijah Dushku's character of Fate comes on it, and it's like it's like a breath of fresh air opened up, and it was fun again. Uh, all you need to do is just put her in it. And she's a fun character. Uh, obviously, that's her favorite on the series. Right hand? Just say yes. No. What is it? Faith. Ugh. God. Faith... Faith is one of the best uh, parts of Buffy and Angel. No. Uh, when Buffy, no. when Angel got bad, oh my God. Faith came into it for a few episodes and she made it fun again. When Buffy got really bad, and I'm not talking about Faith's first appearance, I'm talking about at the end. When Buffy was starting to get bad at the end with you know that first evil type of thing that was going on. Uh, it was starting to lose its way after se series six. It like had gone. I'd done the musical episode, which was amazing. Then done in the other rest of it, which was kind of dry with Willow being the big, big bad. Uh, but when Faith came back into it to help train the uh, the Slayers, uh, it started to uh, to get something again. Elijah Dushku gave a lot to that show, and a lot. <laughs> These are my pickups today: Chain Heat Two, Seasons Three, Four, and Five. Banjo. Hope you guys have a great day. And for me right now, I'm gonna go see the uh, movie later on. But I'm going to go put these back. I'm so freaking proud of finding Chain D2. <clears throat> this is a huge deal for me. I know it's a cheesy women's in prison movie with Brigitte Nielsen, but it's a huge deal for me to find this. Thanks a lot for watching. For me right now, it's time for tea.